Hi everyone. I thought I would hop on here really quickly to show you how you can go about manipulating your analog work in Illustrator to clean up your sketches if you so choose or to digitize them to use them in another program. Uh, there's a second part to this tutorial where I'll be showing you some basic Photoshop how-to, including how to bring those analog or digitized sketches into Photoshop and overlay them onto other work, or how you can bring in textures or create a composite or a collage of some kind, how to manipulate images in general, basically. Um, so this is just an additional step that you can choose to test out if you so wish. Stephanie has also told me that some of you have yet to open Illustrator, but I don't want that to freak you out. This is not going to be a fundamentals for Illustrator by any means, but it is probably the easiest workflow within the program. So give it a shot. Um, I'm going to give you a sec to open up the program and then we'll get started. So there's a few options for opening a new document, like with most Adobe programs, but for the sake of ease, we're just going to drag and drop a file onto the homepage, making sure that you select a a uh, sketch that is bright and clear and shadowless, which you will see why in a second. At the moment, I'm just going through the motions of resizing the graphic to fit the artboard. I could do it the other way around and have the artboard fit the graphic, but I'm trying to keep the document small. I think it's 10 inches by 10 inches because I transferred about 100 gigs from last semester um, onto my external hard drive. So just trying to keep everything sort of small. Go ahead and select window and then image trace, making sure the image is selected to actually use the image trace tool. So I tend to ignore most of the top options. They're default for a reason and often work just fine, although we will try out the color option later just for fun. Um, once you've taken a look at them, go ahead and hit preview and just see how the graphic changes. So this is where you sort of get to play with the advanced settings a bit. The path controls the distance between the trace shape and the original pixel shape. So lower values create a looser fitting path, higher values will create a tighter fitting path. Generally, I find that lowering the path setting tends to make the graphic less sketch-like. Um, the corner, quite obviously, will put emphasis on corners, supposedly turning a sharp end into a corner point, um, where a higher value would result in more corners, but I test it all the time and find that it literally does nothing. Um, and noise simply specifies an area in pixels that is ignored while tracing. So a higher value will result in less noise. I usually hover somewhere in the middle though. It just depends on the sketch. So when you want to save your file, you have a number of options. Um, with this file, we're gonna use save for web legacy to keep the file size low, doing your best to keep your files well organized and properly named. My first semester folders are an embarrassment to the craft and will never see the light of day again because of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this now, bring in a different image. This sketch was done on trace paper with ink and it's meant to show you how a lower contrast image differs when using the image trace tool. Again, resizing the image to keep things tidy and then eventually using the artboard tool to adjust to a portrait sized board. If the image trace tool is not on your right hand toolbar, select window again to find it and just scroll down for image trace. You can make some um, preliminary adjustments if you so choose, but I would just go ahead and hit the preview button and then we'll do those after. So in this case, the threshold option is very important. It specifies a value for generating a black and white tracing result from the original image. So all the pixels lighter than the threshold value are converted to white and all the pixels that are darker than the threshold value are converted to black. So when you have shadows on your graphic or using darker paper, there'll be far less fidelity to the original work. And then eventually when you're happy, you can play around with the advanced adjustments again and then save the file appropriately. So after deleting that file from the board, we're going to test out another medium. These last few are going to be a little bit more for fun. I just wanted to see how the trace tool would respond to some of the other work that I've done in the past. And this one happened to work out quite well. I had a sister image for this that was done on the iPad and it has always bothered me that there wasn't much 
uh, graphic cohesion between these two, despite the fact that they were for the same project. So I loaded this one up for the image trace, this time selecting color, uh, first going with limited to test the output, and then selecting preview. So as you can see, the image trace on the collage gives it a much more illustrated look than what it was previously, which is sort of what I was going for. Obviously it's far too greenwashed right now, so we're just gonna select the automatic color setting this time just to see what else we can get out of this. So I would say quite generally, this looks great. I'm happy with it for now. Maybe it's a little bit too realistic. So at this point, I just lowered the color options to have it look slightly more illustrated and call it a day. Okay, so there's one more trick that I want to show you. I personally think it's pretty nifty um, and it's pretty similar to the last few methodologies as well, but has a few extra steps and it's really great if you're looking to vectorize a specific tree or a plant type that you might want to use a section for example. So I'm just grabbing an image from Google. It looks like an oak, so I'm going to call it an oak. Um, and then I just copied it into a new file using Control V. After going through all of the necessary steps to control the threshold and the noise, etc., um, essentially I'm just looking for a clean simple graphic. I probably could have even gone higher on the noise for even less busyness within the tree canopy, but c'est la vie. Um, but this time, instead of saving it for a Photoshop import, for example, you're going to hit ignore white in the image tree section and then expand. So quite obviously, this will ignore the white output and allow you to be able to place that tree on an illustrated section line. which in a completely out of scale and imperfect world would look a little something like this.